Let's say you gathered 125 to 35 year olds on average salaries. How many do you think would own a home? The answer is only 27. But just 20 years ago, 65 of this group would have been owners. Now that's a huge drop of nearly 40%. Are young people just not into ownership? Well, half of all millennials list it as a top priority, higher than both kids and marriage. In fact, only nine in a hundred say they have no desire to own at all. So why aren't they buying houses? I mean, the answer is obvious, wrong priorities. Lazy avocado references aside, the question is, have young people been kicked off the property ladder? And if they have, what are the implications? So young people are doing a few things later than they used to. They're entering the workforce at 19. That's a year and a half later than two decades ago. They're also coupling later and having kids later. So perhaps buying a house later is just part of a wider pattern of doing things later. But remember, young people want to own. Also, that housing graph looks a lot steeper than the rest. To get to the bottom of this, let's do some maths. Let's imagine a millennial wanting to buy an average house on an average income with no outside help. Is that possible? Well, the good news is they're richer than 20 years ago. 22% richer, in fact. They need a deposit though, so let's see how much they could save each month. First out come the basics. Things like taxes, pension contributions, perhaps even a student loan. Then there's rent, and to save money they're sharing. But then there's also the cost of living. Things like bills, basic living expenses. These numbers come from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. They interviewed a cross-section of the British public to work out the absolute minimum you'd need to have an acceptable standard of living. You know, without having to be a complete hermit. What? Admittedly, it doesn't leave room for that much. But it does mean they're saving nearly a quarter of their take-home pay. Not bad. So let's find an average house to buy. Now for the bad news. House prices have risen 152% over the same period. Meaning while house prices were once four times average income, they are now eight. Okay, some good news and some bad news then. But let's see how far our average salary and nearly 400 quid a month savings will get us towards our average house. So, assuming a mortgage of four times income, that still leaves quite a deposit to save. And at this rate, it'll just take, um, let's see, 34, uh, ooh, 291 months. Uh, wait a minute, that's 24 years. Okay, okay, I can literally hear you typing out your comments now. And it's not that no one can get on the property ladder. There are things you can do. But the point is, is that it's become much harder to get on the ladder, which means less ownership and a lot more private renting. So what are the implications? This is your showcase. Data suggests that the number of children born into private rentals has doubled in just over a decade. Now this is not ideal when research shows that private rentals are the least secure, poorest quality, and most expensive of our housing stock. But even more concerning is that it's forecast a third of all millennials will still be renting when they retire. Now, people's incomes typically halve in retirement, which is manageable if you've paid off your mortgage, but it's not so great if you're still paying rent. And so paying private rents as a pensioner will require a bigger pension pot. Nearly half a million quid, says one study. So to cover the shortfall, the already large housing benefit budget might have to grow by 154%. All of this speaks to general concerns about societal inequality. Just one in 10 25 to 34 year olds earn enough to get on the ladder. Intergenerational wealth is a major boost too. Of those on the ladder, 62% have been helped out by parents or friends whereas only 6% of the over 55s did that. The impact of this initial boost is so stark, the Resolution Foundation have said, inheritance from family may have more of an impact on individuals' lifetime living standards than how much they earn. So perhaps it's no wonder 
that 70% of millennials believe the dream of owning a home is over. <laughs>